Hello friends. Now we are going to discuss about uh, RH incompatibility in obstetric and gynecology. And uh, it is about how we are man uh, managing a patient uh, mother with RH negative uh, during a childbirth, during her gestation. It's about management of the RH incompatibility in obstetrics. And uh, this note has been prepared from uh, with reference to uh, Sheila B's obstetrics textbook. First, uh, the RH negative mother is, uh, is has been reported and while we are checking, the husband is RH, RH positive. Only then we are having this problem uh, and what we are doing is doing an indirect Coombs test. This is ICT is indirect Coombs test. The problem is arising only if the husband is RH positive. If the RH husband is RH negative, then there is no problem. Both are negative uh, in RH and so the child will also be RH. So there is no problem in that. But only when the husband is RH positive, we are having that problem of RH incompatibility uh, in the children, in the baby. So in the entire Coombs test, uh, if it is negative, if the result is negative, then we have to check assess whether the mother, whether the pregnant lady is a primary or is a multi, that is whether she is a primary gravida or she is multi gravida, whether she has given birth to a baby before or uh, whether she is having the baby for the first time. If it is primary gravida or if there is no history of any blood transfusion, that is if it is uh, there is no history, then we, are, we have to repeat this indirect Coombs test at 28 to 34 weeks. In the interval, 28 to 34 weeks of gestation period, we have to repeat the uh, indirect Coombs test. So, if it is the multigravida or if she has a history of the transfusion, then what we have to do, we have to suspect uh, RH incompatibility, uh, that is the antibodies presence in the mother. Because there is a history of previous transfusion, previous mixing up of the blood, uh, fetal blood with that of with the mother. So there we have to do a monthly entire Coombs test in multi gravida or in a patient in a mother with a previous history of blood transfusion. So that that we are doing test and whatever be the this case, we have to give an anti D dose. That is, in the immunization, we have to give the immunization vaccination anti D at 28 weeks. Whether even if she is a primary gravida or even if she is a uh, multi gravida with a history of transfusion, uh, whatever be the case, we have to give an anti D at 28 weeks. And we are planning a delivery at 40th week of the gestation. Huh? And preferably 40th week. If it is there, if there is any other issues or any other indications, we can do it before. That is depending on the case, each case. And after the uh, delivery, another dose of antity has to be given within 72 hours. Within 72 hours of delivery, the second dose of antities has to be given. That we are assuming that there has been a mixing up of blood during the delivery and uh, so that we are giving the second dose of antity. And the dosage of antity is usually around 300 microgram uh, that is per dose. That is a usual one. We have got another method of calculating the anti-D dose and that we will be discussing later. And this is the case of ICT negative. What about interrex Coombs test being positive? If the interrex Coombs test is positive, then what we, uh, what we have to assess is whether she is in the first trimester or in the second or third trimester. If she is in the first trimester, the best preferable uh, management is just terminate the pregnancy. It is better to terminate the pregnancy. It is difficult to continue the pregnancy with the ICT be positive even at the first trimester. So what if the patient is in the second or if the titer value is more than 1 is to 16 that is it's a ratio that is suggesting uh, the mesh, uh, strength of the mixing up of the blood that is strength of the antibodies produced in the mother against the fetal blood. So, if the titer is more than 1 is to 16, then we have to assess with MCA Doppler, middle cerebral artery Doppler. In the middle cerebral artery Doppler, 
if it is a mild disease if the findings are suggestive of the mild disease what is the what are the findings that we are assessing the flow in the mca doppler whether it is reduced flow or there is absent flow or if there is any reversal of flow so if it is a mild disease then we have to terminate the we can terminate the pregnancy at 38 weeks yes it is safer much uh, much safer to continue the pregnancy and we can terminate uh, at 38 weeks we can terminate and if it is severe disease what we have to do is we have to again assess with the pakka the correct gestational age if she is less than 34 weeks if the gestational age is less than 34 weeks somehow we have to continue the pregnancy yeah? so how can we continue the pregnancy here the only thing can be done is an intravascular transfusion of the blood we have to give an intravascular transfusion of the blood and to the fetus and what what we are doing we have we are watching and we are observing and waiting till we reach 34 weeks if it is 34 weeks or more we can terminate the viability viability of the child of the baby is much better much uh, much possible outcome will be there good outcome it will be there if it is more than 34 weeks so more if it is more than 34 weeks we can terminate the pregnancy if it is a severe disease this is the concise flow chart of the management of rh incompatibility and it is it is being written from the sheila b's obstetric textbook and it is as such the table this flow chart is as such given in this textbook and this is all about this uh, management